and then turn around and just head back, really hoping I'm just going to bump into something. Oh, uh, it doesn't get any more buttery than that one. We've got a great wide here. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> it's quite a few fresh footprints. Morning skim conditions. We're up the far north, very, very top. Skim down here last night, it was pretty fun. I might throw a clip or two up. Um, looks fun again this morning. Have just on the back side of the tide right now, so just for where the tide falls it's not not possible to get down here because it's pitch black so um looks fun we're gonna get in the water Ooh, probably missed the tide if you ever ask me how it's going you missed it, really? Oh, ooh. School of fish right there. Oh. Oh. Uh, it doesn't get any more buttery than that one. <laughs> right, so it's about quarter past ten. It is actually Anzac Day. It's a long weekend. Um, plan today, it's going to be a fairly big day for the old legs. Uh, I've already been for that skim session this morning, had some brekkie, I'm going back down now for a shore dive at a lot of little local spots up here. Kerry's staying just down the road, so we may or may not see him in the water. My sort of focus for this dive is A, to not be too long, and B, obviously to get some food. Um, obviously like every other dive. Enough. Um, there's 
there's been lots of kahawai schools come through though, like half a dozen, probably eight schools at different times. Haven't been able to get a shot off on one like they're moving and that, that sort of indicates to me that it's worth keeping my eyes open for something bigger chasing them, obviously. Um, I'm just working ground, I'm poking my head in every cray looking crack. I've found quite a lot of undersized packies. Obviously left them alone and just sort of working this ground, gonna head to this rock, then turn around and just head back, really hoping I'm just gonna bump into something. <music> Fish, a really nice trev. There was, you know, just some fur. There's like 20 trevally in a hole. Yeah. Uh, and I spooked probably about an eight pound snapper on the corner here, just about 10 seconds before I found the trevally. Right. But uh, no kings. Shitloads of kahawai. Oh, yeah. Obviously, fuck all of kahawai. Yeah, I was hoping I was going to bump into some kings. This, yeah, I can there's a heap of bait sitting on that corner there, but there's no kings. It's got that uh, yeah. Oh, I could just come over and come for a full mackerel here, you know. That's the truth. No, oh, that's not bad. Yeah, school of like 20 of them. Just, I was just going to do another loop of this, really. And Have you been out further? Nah. Not along that way. Nah, I've, I've only Especially just got here. There's a ledge that runs off goes along there, quite a long way, that's worth looking at. Okay. But if you're going to go on, it's worth it. I'm going to die, I've only been out here for all you probably know. See me, I've only been out here for 10 minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've done a loop, basically. Shot the trees and the, right. there was a sapper on that corner. Yeah. And there's like... That's where the sapper are, but they're also out in front. Okay. Spotted gopher, oh. the protected fish. Yeah. I'm 99% sure. Yeah. All right, you, you've probably seen. I've just linked up with Kerry, and, and the fish I just, I've just seen. I've just filmed it coming out of the out of its hole. I think it's one of our spotted gopher, which is like our only. I don't, I'm not 100% sure on this. Our only protected fish in New Zealand. I'm pretty sure it's one. I've never seen one before. Um, I'm going to go and try and film it again, obviously not going to pester or anything, but um, we'll just keep, keep having a look and have a little look in this hole here. Right, so now this is where it got interesting. I'm going to try to help you fill in the blanks a little bit with a little bit of uh, narration. But basically, this shark's come in. I've obviously got fish in the water. 90% um, of divers, as far as I know, use a float line. On a shore dive like this, you're dragging. I had a pigfish and a trevally on my float line. This area itself, I've never seen a shark. I've dived this spot dozens of times through this part of the coast and never once seen a shark so i don't regard it as sharky water uh it wasn't overly fishy this day but the stink distinct lack of kingfish was actually quite odd um this is where it turned the when the shark first came in i actually thought it was a turtle because i've seen a turtle through there and i switched my camera on and went after it 
Hey, Carrie! Carrie! Great white here. There's a white here. Oi. Got some white. Or get some white. Pretty good look at them. Changes your plans, does it? <laughs> I thought it was a turtle, and I'm starting to zoom in after it. <laughs> Now as you can see it's it's actually hit the pigfish on my line, hasn't touched the trevally, it's gone for the pigfish. At this stage I was basically had my hand on my shark clip on the back of the gun because I was going to release my float line if it got tangled up in my float line so I didn't lose my gear. Um, it's bit it and it's bit through the line obviously. Um, and then it was pretty much, pretty much from there, it's basically just evaluating what the shark's doing and working out a game plan for ourselves and sort of trying to establish if we're, uh, us, like we ourselves are in danger. Yeah, he just broke off, eh? The bronzy, of course, which we're fairly used to, you, uh, you'd you go in pretty forcefully into that situation and try to push the bronzy away, keep it away from your fish. I don't know the protocol with a great white. If you insist you know, you're obviously more knowledgeable on the subject than I. We weren't prepared to go in there. This fish was about in that eight to nine foot range. We reckon he was probably a couple hundred kilos. It wasn't a small great white. It wasn't a huge one, but it was certainly big enough to do some proper damage and push us around. So I wasn't going in there with my gun to try to push it off the fish. Neither was Gary. He's still there.
Go grab my float, go! He was way more interested in that pig fish. Yeah, that's the second great white I've swam with with a trevally. With a trevally at my feet, he hasn't touched the trev. And his, head, and his head, he's fucking two foot wide across the head. Yeah. I reckon, well, I mean, I'm getting out of here. Yeah, I'm going to have to push it. Myself, yeah. You don't want to take the piss kind of thing. Yeah. Awesome, right? That's sick. That's so sick. I got text from my great white. <laughs> well, I'm going to film! <laughs> Is he still here? He was just off here. Uh -oh. I think we just want to slowly make our way back to the rock. But get back to your, your shit. Woo! <laughs> Been in a great light smell. <laughs> so I chuck him back on my line. Ollie? Wooden. Oh, I mean, if you want to eat them, yeah, but I mean, Yeah, just stop them. Might keep them occupied. So at this stage, we'd hit, we'd headed back to the rock. Now we we're about 150 meters. I jumped on Google Maps. We we're about 150 meters from the rock, which was about 200 meters offshore. Nothing but water to get back to shore. We darted back to the rock and sort of thought we we're actually contemplating and keep diving. And then of course it's come in and done done another bloody pass on us again. As so it's followed us back to shore. Um, interestingly enough, as you've seen, it didn't eat the pigfish, not while we were around it, it's just taken it. So that's something interesting. We made the call there to just pull the pin and get out of the water. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I tried to get his tail then. About the fucking far off. Doing our best, doing our best seal impression, eh? <laughs> oh, we've got out. This, um, I don't know if I got a clip right at the end there, but it's come back in on us, got super, super close and like two meters of water. So we've made the call. Ah, we're actually going to walk around these rocks, probably. Uh, we've got about, I don't know, a little way. Yeah. Yeah, half a K or something, but we feel like it's the safer, smarter option right now. How, how's that for you? Uh, that was pretty epic, actually, to be honest. I actually really enjoyed it. It's uh, pretty nerve-wracking, I can tell you that. But uh, uh, pretty magical to swim with, like, such an incredible creature, you know. And didn't feel threatened by it, but I, I did think that as soon as I got something struggling in my hands, like if I'd shot a fish or something, it would have been right on top of me and I would have been collateral damage. So there you go. That's um, I'd say that's a fairly credible great white encounter. Well, um, we're going to get back. 
and I'll probably touch base with you there. Now, obviously, wrapping up this video, this was a hell of an experience. I think normal shark knowledge and protocols and things... I don't have enough knowledge on swimming with great whites. For me, this is the second time this has happened. It is a very, very, very different experience than a bronze whaler. A bronze whaler comes in and is typically interested in the fish you have. It doesn't really care about you. Both the experiences now with great whites, it has basically been the opposite. It is not necessarily interested too much in the fish, and it's interested in us. Hence why, like, it's followed us in to the rock, and then we, we don't know. We had about the best part of a kilometre swim back to where we actually got in. We weren't risking it. We didn't want to watch our bloody feet the whole way back swim back along the coast, so hence the decision to get out. Obviously, the adjustment... I. I I need to invest in a float boat. I need to sort myself out with a float boat. Was that the reason the shark came in? Probably not, that there was fish in the water. The distinct lack of kingfish that day, um, even though all the other sign was there and it's a coast for kingfish, may have hinted that something else was at play there in the water that day, hence why there was a great white. It is great white country up there. I'm not going to give you the exact spot we were. Um, but overall, a hell of an experience. Obviously, we take, I, I, I mean, I'll talk for myself personally, I take a hell of a lot from an experience like that. It's basically with me to the day I die now. I'm going to actually report the sighting to Doc and, and uh, supply them with some footage just because, it's, you know, the footage, given the circumstances, is pretty much as good as it's going to get. This is all shot off your head. You know, you're not risking getting as close as you can to this animal because, like I said, it was about... I would have said it was probably around about nine feet, maybe a fraction under, and that is, you know, that's a big animal in the water. It is wider than us. It, its head, I would say, was wider than my torso. So it is a hell of a fish. It had fishing line hanging out of its mouth. It, it, you know, it is a natural-born predator, and it's one of these sharks that have evolved to hunt marine mammals, which is a very different circumstance than a bronze whaler. So that's it. Um... Probably an experience that I really don't voluntarily want to repeat again, but no doubt will in the future. Uh, feel free to subscribe. I'm Sam Price. I'll see you at the beach.